Hello everyone, welcome back to Siberia. We have lowered the water, so it's time uh, to <coughs> let those people know that we have lowered the water. So they can just barge their barge in. See what I did there? The barge to barge. Yeah, man, I'll be here all next till the end of this episode. 20 minutes? 25 minutes? Who knows? Who knows? All right, lady. It's done. Barge in. Move. Slam the chip through the station. Do it. Hey there. On the boat. Hola. Good tag, cherie mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? Yeah, it's open. Uh, the locks. Right. I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. God forbid. Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle etwa. Range alle Dingen and obligados die Dame. Ach, set content on the route again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up. We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? <laughs> that, was, that was horrible. He started that last sentence with um, <clears throat> a very nasty curse word. In English, you would say, God damn. That's, <laughs> that's what he said. Um, though written differently, but yeah, that clearly was the the word. And then he said something along the line. I forgot most of it already, but he said something along the lines of that, sir. She's actually a, a proper woman, and she knows how to do things. <coughs> and let's help her get get all our shit together and move. Something like that, so she can help her. Alright, so do we do we need to raise the water now? I think we may have to. So let's let's see if this works as I think it will. So it's that one and then for raise the water. It is. <laughs> that is so cool. Alright, boat is done. But now, how are you gonna... Hey! My train! Oh, okay, you're stopping. Alright. Can we move over the water using the sluice? Can we walk over here? Can we cross it? No. Uh, whoops. I lost focus, so that's why you didn't hear things. <laughs> well, I didn't lose focus, the window lost focus. Okay, come on. So, I think we have to go this way. Can we speak to them? But we also still have to <clears throat> um, listen to the lecture. Yeah, there you are. Hey there, on the boat. Da, da, barge on other side. You still need us? Yes, of course I do. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, Lokoko Mitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Oh, catch it, sir. Nice. The best part is I got a hook. 
So do I use the hook on the chain? Yeah. Yeah, that's how you do it. By train. Right now, now we're actually at this point. So now we can probably do something here, but we need that mammoth. Don't we? So when are you going to call us? Okay, let's wind it up. So what happened to Barokstad? This this looks like um, <coughs> it has been bombarded. Oh, now we get a phone call. Okay. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukols at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. All right, let's head back then. All the way back to the university. Oh, what the hell was that? <coughs> was a loud uh, bump outside here. Someone smashing their door shut. Come on, Kate. The station is too big. It's empty without a train, that's what it is. Alright, let's go this way. And back there. I do have the feeling that this is the last thing that we need to do here. Besides winding up the train, obviously. So let's enjoy this view <clears throat> one more time. Not the last time because we still need to pass it. But it's so it's gorgeous. I love it. You're still playing music. You're still perving there on the corner. Weirdo. Okay, main lecture hall. I think it's it's over there. Oh wait, yet need to <laughs> you need to walk. You cannot. Those steps are. It's don't try it. Okay, but these steps we can enter, walk up to. I hope it won't be a long lecture. Ah, there you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. Well, here we go. My young friends, a very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. 
It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. We know that the origins of the Yukos date back to the last ice age. And curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe and more precisely in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. And this people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They use them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. Hmm? Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yukol's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make do with Yukol Shaman artifacts. The research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian Ice Ark is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukol's tender care. And the island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and tish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. 
And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. Well, thank you very much. That was quite a lecture. And I had the feeling that someone fell asleep during the lecture. Because I, I thought I heard snoring. Anyways, he said that we should go to his laboratory to pick up the doll. <coughs> and, um... Was it a pamphlet? We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what's on the table. And then we can finally wind up the train again and move to our next destination. Very exciting. That way. This way. That door is still locked, isn't it? Are there something there? <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> more reading. The Legend of the Ivory Ark. The last ice age ended when the planet warmed up. This sudden climatic change threatened the existence of many animal species, including mammoths inhabiting the far northern Siberian wastes. It is said that the Yukol peoples decided to follow Noah's example and build an enormous ark to try to preserve their mammoth's existence. They lived in symbiosis with the pachyderm, which was at the heart of their rel religious worship. The ship was constructed entirely from mammoth tusks. A small herd of mammoths was installed on board with enormous quantities of fodder. Control of the ship was entrusted to a handful of particularly intemperate Yukol clans. Their mission was to take the animals to other lands with pastures more befitting to their survival. One day, 50 summers later, a legend would have it the Ark returned to its starting point. The Yukols were astonished to find nobody aboard apart from the carcasses of several mammoths perfectly preserved in the ice encasing the ship. The clansmen believed this was a mysterious sign from the gods and they ate the mammoths in a memorable feast. One week later, the Ark set sail once more, carried away by the currents. Again it returns, half a century later, with not a soul on board except more well-preserved frozen mammoths' carcasses. This mystery continued for millennia, each time the surprisingly well-preserved mammoths appearing out of nowhere. The Yukols interpreted the phenomenon as a benevolent offering from their dead companions, who were believed to have perished on the Ark's first voyage in some horrendous maritime cataclysm. It was believed that their souls had found eternal rest on a mythical island that the shaman named Siberia. They constructed the whole religion around this belief, with rites and customs punctuated by the periodic appearances of the phantom ship and its precious cargo. For centuries, nothing changed the Ark's mysterious cycle. Only the size of the mammoths changed, reducing imperceptibly over time. Imperceptibly. Yeah. Until one day, a hundred or so years ago, the Ark returned earlier than expected. It was empty. 
The Yugos were dumbfounded and utterly confused. The spirits of their ancestors had forsaken them. Everything they had believed in that had been the bedrock of their culture since the very depths of time had now lost all meaning. The most fanatical believers noted that the frequency of the appearances had in fact increased and maintained that there was still hope as long as the Ark continued its return journeys from the unknown. Some elder Yukos boasted having seen it several times, but thenceforth, each time the white ship returned, it only offered an empty shell to the despairing eyes of the surviving Yukos. The belief became superstition, and the reality became legend. Ah. Interesting. Uh, where's my doll? There it is. It's very tiny. So thank you very much, Professor, but I'm gonna be on my way. I think this is all I need. I need my doll back. I need to put it on a pedestal. I got that voice cylinder that I need to uh, place in um, a cupboard or something. Right, we, we place them somewhere, those four cylinders. In the train. Not somewhere else. Not not at the bandstand here. Gorgeous music. Oh, whoops, misclicked again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am going to keep on doing that, don't worry. And now for the last time, what a beautiful view that was. This is actually the last time I'm going to see that. Right, so... <clears throat> uh, we need to go this way. I guess we need to be on the, on the train platform. That way. And now we gotta... Walk a complete marathon. 42 kilometers. Just to get to our train. It's so far away. Almost there, Kate Walker. Almost there. 